praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Good evening, Facebook. My name is Peter Momagos from Beyond the Enemy Gates Ministries. And this is the fourth session that we're doing out of an eight session um, series or teaching on healing by the Holy Communion and also going through the seven steps of biblical healing. Our healing is appropriated by faith. Uh, we should be taught it when we come into the kingdom. Um, unfortunately, we not. Um, my understanding is that you come into the kingdom, you get saved, you appropriate your salvation by faith. Then you should be water baptized. Then you should be baptized in the spirit. And then you should go through a process of healing. And you should be taught because healing is in the word of God. And most people don't appropriate healing because they have no knowledge or very little knowledge of the word of God and these promises to walk out your um, race in biblical health. And I explained earlier, good evening, Devolt. Hello, I think it's Nay. Um, if I get it correctly, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But welcome tonight. Um, I trust that you're learning something. And the idea is that you would get the understanding that if you take communion on a daily basis, it's the secret of God to walking out your race in biblical health. We shouldn't have to go to the doctors. I know that we do from time to time, um, but we shouldn't have sickness and disease. And I'll share it with you tonight, the third step. We're actually going to go straight into the third step. I'm not going to do um, any recap tonight because I feel that we need to get to the meat of the third step because the third step is actually the enemy that's raged against the church and against the people and convinced them that the word uh, is of no effect because that's his aim, is to get us to believe that the word is of no effect. But we read the word, we hear the word, but we don't do the word. So we've got to appropriate the word by faith because the word is life. And that's how you get it into your body. Now, my understanding is that as you walk in the spirit, you move your flesh out of the way and your spirit man becomes to do, uh, begins to dominate. And therefore, you walk in the spirit more than you walk in the flesh. Uh, and it's a process that takes place. Um, please share the video if you can. Um, I encourage you to. We've had some very good feedback. Um, and if I can get a couple of people just to take communion on a daily basis for the rest of their lives, we would have achieved something. So let's go uh, into the teaching tonight. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name once again today. We say good evening, Lord. Good evening, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Spirit. And Father, we come. We declare this place as holy ground and every other person that joins tonight and even after uh, the, the, the re-screening, um, when they watch it, we declare their places as holy ground. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you and we thank you that your hand is upon this discussion tonight and that you would move the way that you want to move tonight in Jesus' name. And we come and we bind the spirit of unbelief. We break the power of the enemy that rages against the people's minds. Uh, we break the power of the spirit of religion. We break the power of every mind binding and mind blinding spirit. We take authority over those spirits and we bind them in Jesus name. We break their power in the spirit and by the spirit and we cancel them out in Jesus name. And Father, we come tonight and we share the third step of biblical healing. The other thing that the Lord spoke to me about today is to share the teaching on the Holy Communion again, because faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear the teaching, the more you gain and you build up your faith. So, you know, I said the other night that maybe we should read through that teaching once a week. Uh, if you're in a family situation, it's ideal because you can share it uh, and you can have a discussion around the, the, the meal. Um, but the more we get to understand and we appropriate it by faith, our faith levels will grow. And I said it again, and I say it again, we go from faith to faith, power to power, 
and glory to glory. There's only one way to do it, faith to faith. So let's share the third step. Uh, it's chapter four in the book. The book is available uh, as an ebook uh, on my website, www.beyondtheenemygates.coza. And the, there's a free um, PDF download on healing by the Holy Communion. So if you can't get the book, um, I encourage you to get the teaching on healing by the Holy Communion. It's about five pages, four and a half, five pages, but you can focus on it. And I put the prayer uh, pattern in there that you can follow. You can pray and you can work out uh, your own prayer pattern. But I always give a prayer pattern so that people can um, follow it and hopefully hit the mark. I'm not saying that every prayer is not effective. It is effective. God hears every prayer. But we need to get the correct um, pattern and protocol of prayer so that we hit the mark. I explained the other night, the only way we miss the mark is when we go like this. We move our, we move our eyes off the Lord. We miss the mark. We miss the mark. Um, so let's share tonight. Hello, Laurel. Good to see you. Hello, Bernard. Good to see you, my friend. Um, let's go through the third step. The third step to receive biblical healing is to understand that God wants us to be well and only Satan wants us to suffer. The belief of many is that God has permitted their sickness. This shipwrecks their faith entirely in this area. They believe God may have even placed it upon them and they should have patience and not pursue physical healing by faith in his promises. This is a lie from the devil. Unbelief is one of the key weapons of the enemy. The spirit of unbelief binds God's people to the truth. Blinds God's people to the truth. Thousands of people, including God's people, suffer for years and die prematurely because of this unbelief and other concepts brought about by church tradition. The spirit of religion. Sickness and disease is destructive and comes only from one source, the destroyer, Satan himself, and not from God. Jesus said, the thief, Satan, cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, John 10.10. 10. Disease is from Satan. Sickness and disease are influences of death at work in the human body. Job, in Job, Satan was the root of his sickness. Satan went forth and smote Job with sore boils. The woman who was bowed over and could in no way lift herself up, that Satan had bound her and that she had a spirit of infirmity in her body. Luke 13, 11 to 16. The blind man who was blind and dumb and was possessed with the devil. Jesus cast the devil out, the blind and the dumb both spake and saw, Matthew 12, 22. When the boy who was deaf and dumb and caused to have convulsions by a foul spirit was prayed for by Jesus, the deaf and dumb spirit was cast out and the boy was perfectly whole, Mark 9, 25 to 27. Satan's part, the spirit of infirmity. You know, when we pray for healing we, and we take the communion, we pray against every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, and every spirit of infirmity. Sickness is a spirit in some cases. We'll go through a couple of them. Every disease has a life, and the source of the disease or the germ is Satan, the destroyer, John 10.10. 10. Jesus called it a spirit of infirmity, Luke 13.11-13. The germ causes the disease to grow. When that germ or life leaves our body, it will die, decay and return to the dust. When the spirit of disease leaves, the physical disease dies, de decays and disappears and it comes out of your body. A cancer growth or disease has a life in it. The source of that destructive life is the destroyer, the killer. Satan, John 10.10 10 again, as long as the life of the disease exists in the infirmity, it will continue its deadly work. When the life of the spirit of cancer or disease is commanded to leave in Jesus' name, the sickness dies, decays, dissolves, 
and from that moment disappears and the person recovers. Mark 16 verse 18. Biblical terms for sickness. Deafness may be called deadened nerves. The Bible calls it the spirit of deafness. Underdeveloped vo vocal cords, the Bible calls a, a dumb spirit. Cataracts and glaucoma, the Bible calls it a blind spirit. When we understand that Satan is the deadly source of disease and that the spirit of infirmity is the life of sickness, then we can deal with and rebuke the sickness in Jesus' name, commanding it to come out and to leave. And we can be sure that the sickness is dead and will disappear. How? By faith. By faith. So let's go. I'm going to pray tonight for addiction. So if you have any addiction, we'll cover a couple of them. Um, you, you know, you have to resist the devil. I can pray for you uh, in the power of agreement. But you have to resist the devil on a daily basis. So once we've agreed that we break the power of the addiction in and over your life, you have to then go on a daily basis and implement a plan whereby you identify the enemy when he comes. Because he will come. He knows your weakness. He knows where you've fallen before. So he won't come back with something else. He'll come back with what you weaken. So you have to um, work out a plan, uh, see him from a distance, flee when he comes. It says re resist the devil. If you resist him, he will flee. Um, and also James 5, 16. It's a confession partner. It talks about um, confess your sin to one another, pray for one another so that you may be healed. My understanding is that is that although you've sinned, okay, when you agree with someone and they pray for you, that power in the sin or the um, the sin is removed as far as the east of the is from the west when you pray or when you confess your sin to the Lord, it's removed. But it may still have power in it in the fact that when it's discussed or brought up, it has a bit of power. But if someone agrees with you in prayer, my understanding that is even though you've sinned, even though you've done the deed or whatever it is, when that accusation comes, that accusation in the future has no power because you've dealt with it and it's removed, totally gone. James 5, 16, a prayer partner, find someone that you can trust, someone that you can confess um, your sin to that, that won't repeat what you've told them and that they'll stand in agreement with you and pray and that you would be delivered and healed. So let's go to healing by the Holy Communion. I've just got to scroll down and get it. It's a fairly, and I say it every time, uh, I don't get tired reading it because it reinforces um, my faith. Um, and I heard it about two years ago um, and it's worked for me. Uh, I mentioned it before. I've been uh, sickness free for seven years. Um, I should have been taken out by the enemy, I believe, because I was attacked by two Jezebels, not one, two um, spirit of pathos and a spirit of witchcraft that worked a work of Satan in and against my life for a minimum of seven years. So, um, praying in the spirit also, I uh, reinforce that. My understanding is that as you pray in the spirit, your spirit man or your spirit is edified, it's built up. So you build up a fortress within your body where your spirit pushes your flesh out. So there's more spirit eventually than flesh. So that's how you overtake the flesh, is to deny it and to pray in the spirit and grow the spirit in that. So let's, um, I'll read the communion. I don't have a problem reading with it. It takes a little bit of time, but I'll try and take it as slowly and clearly as possible because sometimes you tend to rush because it's a little bit lengthy. Uh, healing by the Holy Communion, John 6, 32 to 58. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give them the bread from heaven, 
For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They, then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who uh, believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And all that the Father has given me, or gives me, will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him has everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Because he said, uh, and they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then I've come down from heaven? How is it then that he says, I've come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. The law of the life in Christ Jesus. Of all the great leaders who have ever walked the earth, one thing separates Jesus from them all, in that is he is the only leader who told his followers to eat his flesh and drink his blood. No one else ever did that. And Jesus gave a teaching that they couldn't receive. He gave the command that if they wanted to be his disciple, they must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And if they did, he said he would live, that they would live as he lives, live like me. The Holy Communion is something that God gave us to receive the very thing that makes Jesus God. It is not a ceremony to confess our sin and say we're sorry again. It is the thing that Jesus gave us that imputes his very life into, our, into the believer. 1 John 4.17 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we are day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. As he is, not as he was. How is he? He's high and lifted up, seated at the right hand of the Father, eyes as flames of fire, feet like bronze fired in the furnace, a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, hair as white as wool, and his voice is like the sound of many waters. As he is, so are we in this world. Get this, the communion means for us, is God's means for us to receive the life that is in Christ that makes him God into us. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, 
I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. There is no other religion that claims to have their leader living on the inside of them. The adherents are simply followers of the founder. We are not only following after Christ, he lives on the inside of us and equips us to live like him on the earth. Every, everything that's in your life and is planted in your life that is contrary to the nature of God is uprooted and casted out this very hour in Jesus' name. Key, you don't have to die sick. There's never a time when disease has to be permitted in your body. Uh, there's never a time... Uh, we, we discern the secret of the communion, which is God's prescription to biblical health or for biblical health. God does not want you eating and drinking pills and taking prescription drugs and barely hanging on to your life. God gave us something to ingest. His flesh and his blood. And he said, whoever eateth me will live like me. What does the bread do? And Elisha turned to return to Gilgal and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting uh, before him and he said to his servant put on a large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophet of the prophets so one went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild goods and came and sliced them into the pot of stew though they did not know what they were then they served them to the it served it to the men to eat now it happened as they were eating the stew they cried out and said a man of God, there's death in the pot and they could not eat it. So he said, then bring some flour, bread, and he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. When Elisha took the flour and threw it into the pot, it neutralized the poison and made everything that was in the pot good to eat. Just as the flour neutralized the poison, in the pot in the Old Testament, as we ingest the bread, all the poison or sickness that's in our bodies is swallowed up by the bread in Jesus' name. What does the blood do? Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it upon you, uh, to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. The Passover meal was a type of Christ a lamb without spot and wrinkle. They did not only apply to the doorpost of their houses only. They were required to roast the lamb and every member of the family ate it. And when they had finished eating, what happened? God himself delivered judgment against the gods of Egypt and delivered his people out of Egyptian bondage and captivity. What does the communion do? It elicits help from above. The same power that got Israel out of Egypt in one night will get you out of whatever trouble or situation that you find yourself in, in Jesus' name. What else does the blood do? The communion is a spiritual meal that doesn't only heal your body and elicit help from above. It, implicit, it, it imputes the very life of God into your soul and spirit. Everything that is spiritually dead in your life comes alive by the communion. What about the blood? The blood, the Bible says that when they killed the lamb, they drained it and took the blood uh, and put it in a basin and took hyssop branches and dipped it into the blood and applied it to the doorposts of their houses. And when the angel of death saw the blood on the doorposts, it could not touch them. The blood of Jesus is a protection agent. Therefore, when we take the blood, the same way they did in Exodus 12, we are receiving the blood of Christ, not just to heal our bodies, but to ward off every virus, sickness and disease that's floating around in the atmosphere. What else about the blood? When you ingest the blood of Jesus by the Holy Communion, you are ingesting the life of Christ into your body. What is the life of Christ? It's resurrection life. Life that's irrepressible. Life that death has no power over. Did you get it? Death. We are not going to die. We are going to live forever. What is sickness? Sickness is merely an agent of death. Death is no longer that no longer has its sting, as in Romans 6 and has no hold over him or us. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, and when, you, uh, and when you do, my life will be in you. There's nothing in hell that can overcome the life of Jesus. The law of the life of, life of Christ in Christ Jesus is greater than the law of death. Whatever could not hold Jesus down will not hold you down, 
by the law of the life which is in Christ Jesus. What else does the blood do? The last section. It opens your spiritual eyes. Luke 24, 28 to 31 says, Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Um, I mentioned before, you can download that uh, PDF from my, face, uh, my website uh, for free. Uh, you can follow the pattern and protocol of prayer that I use there. But let's take communion. Father, we come, we enter your presence once again through the blood. We come tonight and we thank you that we can repent of our sin of the day, sin of omission, sin of commission, sin of negative word, negative thought a negative deed. And we thank you that we understand that our sin is removed as far as the east is from the west, never to be brought up and repeated again. And Father, we come and we bless the elements and we thank you that as we partake of the bread, that every sickness, every disease, every infirmity and every spirit of infirmity that's in our bodies is swallowed up by the bread in Jesus' name, the bread. Father, we come and we partake of the blood with the understanding that it elicits help from above. That every situation that we find ourselves in, whether it be spiritually, physically, emotionally, even financially, that we would elicit help from above and we would receive it in Jesus' name. And Father, we come and we partake of the blood with the understanding that it wards off Every sickness, every disease, every virus that's floating around in the atmosphere, including Corona, and that there's a hedge of protection in and around and over our bodies from sickness, disease, and every virus in Jesus' name. And Father, we come and we partake of the blood and with the understanding that it opens our spiritual eyes, that we begin to see, begin to know, begin to hear more clearly, uh, that we have a greater measure of insight, foresight, revelation, and inspiration, particularly uh, concerning and to the secrets and the mysteries of God. And the greatest secret that we would ever know and mystery that we would ever know is your plan for our lives. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, the blood. And all God's children said, Amen. Um, I mentioned that we would pray for addiction. So if you have any addiction, doesn't matter what it is. Um, we've all been a little bit addicted to something along the road in our lives. Um, we could be, could have been addicted to alcohol. Um, the Arabic term for alcohol is a flesh eating spirit. Now my understanding is that you can be delivered from any spirit, any demon, um, almost immediately. I support the AA, I agree with them, but you don't necessarily have to go through a whole program. Some people might have to, but you could be del delivered instantly from a spirit because it's a spirit, but you have to understand that it's a spirit to be delivered from the spirit. Um, gluttony, food, food could be an addiction for you. It might not be for many people, but some people are addicted to food in various forms and shapes and fashions. Um, you could be addicted to drugs, particularly prescription drugs. Um, pornography is a big one. Uh, the statistics tell us that more than 50% uh, of people in the church um, view pornography uh, for in, the, in the month so many percentage, over 50%. So that comes through by a spirit of lust uh, that's attached itself to you. And unless you understand and you identify what is causing you to fall, uh, you will battle with that spirit. 
Um, I've battled with a, um, a perverse spirit for many years. Uh, I delivered, I, I self-delivered uh, after getting the understanding of what it was, number one, and number two, how to administer self-deliverance, which I never really uh, understood myself uh, until I, I was delivered. And then I knew what had happened. But you have to work out a plan. You need to resist the devil so that he flees from you when he comes. So whatever you're doing, uh, if you need to uh, resist um, social media, if you need to resist certain people, if you need to resist certain things that you listen to or certain places that you go to, that's going to have to be a part of your plan and your strategy to resist the devil because he'll get you. He'll get you. Um, and my understanding is that in your um, own power, you can resist him for about six months. You fall, you sin, you resist him, you repent, you're remorseful, because uh, that's what normally happens. You condemn yourself, uh, although the Lord says it's removed as far as the east is from the west. Six months later, you fall and you're back to square one. So you need to resist him. You need to find people that you can get around that will encourage you and support you um, and really get you out of that situation. So I'm going to pray for the spirit of addiction tonight. You lift it up as we come in the power of agreement, uh, multiplication of prayer power. Um, I can't name them all. I don't know them all actually offhand. Um, but we'll come against the spirit of addiction and we'll believe that you will be from tonight totally healed in Jesus name as you resist it, as you apply James 5 16 a prayer partner that you can confess your sin to so that the enemy doesn't have a foothold or, a, or the, the door is closed that you've allowed him to attach himself to in your life. So let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus name. And Father, I lift up every addiction spirit that has attached itself to our lives tonight. We take authority over those spirits and we bind them. We break their power. We cancel them out. We command them to loose the people. Father, I loose every person that has a spirit of addiction that desires to be free tonight. I loose him from that addiction in Jesus' name. And Father, I loose their thinking from the kingdom of darkness and I bind it to their kingdom. And I thank you that we free in Jesus' name. The spirit of alcohol, the spirit of gluttony, prescription drugs, drugs themselves, Father, the spirit of lust, I declare that we totally healed in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it and we vow to give you all the honor, all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me tonight. We'll go through a step five tomorrow, I believe. Uh, I trust that you encouraged and I trust that you would begin to form uh, a pattern of taking communion every night for healing in your body because you're going to have to finish your race strong and your race finishing strong in my understanding is the same as Caleb. Uh, Caleb is that at the age of 85 he said to Joshua give me the mountain because as I was then so I am now so give me the mountain my hands are ready for war and we need to have that mindset and if you have called by God, wherever you are, you can be in a home situation, you can be in a, a corporate situation, you can be in ministry, wherever you are, you're going to have to be equipped to run your race and I encourage you to take communion on a daily basis. Blessings tonight. I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus name. Good night.